Let's talk a little bit about some of those areas because these are the things that are uh, occupying and, uh, people's minds in sustainability. How do we deal with the technologies that are coming, coming forward? How do we deal with climate change? Are we really seeing, uh, for example, the, the feedback loops and so on really modelled into the climate change models? So yeah. all of these current challenges that we've got, where do you see systems thinking actually being applied? Well, I think uh, the, the people who are at the theoretical forefront are all now systemic thinkers. They have to be, because they have to realize how things are interconnected. When you go to talk to geneticists, for instance, molecular biologists, they would say, you know, the days where you defined genes just as a stretch on the double helix of the DNA, a certain segment, those days are over. Now you have to draw genetic maps that show how genes interact. Uh, you have to show how the genetic network is embedded in a cellular network, how genes are switched on and off in certain patterns depending on their environment and so on. So there's a much more holistic, a much more systemic view at the forefront of biology. Uh, you wouldn't think so when you, when you uh, read the press releases of biotech corporations because they, they still think in the mechanistic and reductionist way that uh, when we discover you know, the connection between a gene and a certain illness that means that that will allow us in the future to have some medicine that, that can cure the illness. And I think the, uh, the reason why they publicize the research in this way is, is very unfortunate. It's, it's economic because for them uh, to have a front page article in the New York Times saying a new gene for Alzheimer's, say, has been discovered. Now there's a hope to cure Alzheimer's. You know, their stock shoots up. You know? by, by the time, you know, half a year later, where they discover it's actually much more complicated, which is then reported on page 25 in the New York Times, by that time they have moved on to something else and there's another front page article. So um, there's a difference between actual research and the commercial aspect of it. But I think researchers at the forefront of the field are systemic thinkers today, uh, even more so in climate change because, you know, the climate models, about which I know very little, by the way, um, what the IPCC and those people uh, do in, in their modeling, I know that it's extremely complex and I have spoken with people who are involved in that but they, they are systemic thinkers. But I think there's another level of systemic thinking which I promote in my seminars and lectures and, and which is extremely important for business people. And that is just to realize that today there are no more local problems, that the kind of cars we drive, the kind of consumer choices we make, the kind of choices of how to run a factory or a business that we, uh, that we make uh, influence the health and safety of large populations in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in other parts of the world. Let me just give you an, an, one example. Um, the uh, you know, exhaust gases from, from cars uh, that are greenhouse gases um, the burning of fossil fuels uh, affects global warming which among many other things uh, leads um, not only to heat waves and droughts and, and flooding that affect crops that, that lower the, the grain harvest but also leads to the melting of huge glaciers in the Himalayas and other mountain areas uh, that feed the main rivers of Asia which are used for irrigation of huge areas of crops and as these glaciers melt 
and the rivers uh, carry uh, then afterwards carry less water uh, there, there is the threat of huge famines that, that will arise as a result of global warming which is a consequence of the fossil fuels we burn in our cars if we used you know cars like the the one I, I just picked you up in the Toyota Prius which gets my car gets 42 miles per gallon and there are better ones on the market today that get 50 miles per gallon and more if we all used those cars those glaciers wouldn't melt and so that kind of systemic thinking to see how the world's problems today are all interconnected now there is major good news I think that that everybody who is reading your book or you know listening to these interviews should know the 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 main good news is that there is easy access to this knowledge today um, at the moment I'm just reading Lester Brown's new book the same Lester Brown who coined the term sustainability who uh, just published a book called Plan B and in this book he shows in a masterful way how these various problems are interconnected and he shows what to do about it. He has a road map for moving the world towards sustainability and each of his proposals has already been tested somewhere in the world and for each proposal he also attaches an estimated annual budget and he comes up with a total figure which is much much smaller than it which is one-sixth of the world military budget so uh, he shows very convincingly that we have the knowledge now to move towards sustainability we have the technologies and we have the money it's just a question of a reordering of priorities a question of values and politics so i want to really uh, emphasize this very strongly that access to information is easy today when you run a business and you want to um, you know save money on on your electricity outlays on on uh, your uh, water consumption on the raw materials that you use in your business you can you can look this up on on the internet you can go to the website of the rocky mountain institute or similar institutes or you know in the uk there's a sustainability institute there's a um, department at the university of plymouth that that has this information there's just lots of organizations around you you have books that you can read like uh, natural capitalism by paul hawken and hunter and amory lovins uh, like plan b by lester brown all these books have tons of references so you know there's there's no real excuse for not doing it and of course you can hire these people as consultants and they will send teams into your company to advise you so so we have we have all the means to move towards sustainability